Welcome to Profile. I'm your host, Paula Hersey, and today we have special guests with us. We have Jerry Desital and we have Katrina Freiland from the Latham Centers. We also have really special guests down below us is <laughs> our uh, resident dogs here, one for the Media Center, Mr. Dog, and we also have Shasta. We're <laughs> talking to the Latham Centers today about a new program that they just released and some of the other things that are happening there. But first, Jerry, can you tell us a little bit about Latham Centers and what you do there? Sure. Latham was founded in 1970, um, which surprises some people because um, it was founded as a, a school, residential treatment school for traumatized girls. and. Uh, the story goes that a group of hippies decided they would come to Cape Cod and start this program because it would be affordable to do it on Cape Cod. <laughs> <laughs> and my have times yeah. changed. Right. Um, and while they were treating these girls, um, they then opened a, uh, another residence for boys. But there were two girls especially who presented certain symptoms and in, in, in irregular behavior um, more exaggerated than some of the other girls. And uh, the staff started to think, you know, we really have to figure out what's going on with these girls so we can help them more. Well, it's, long story short, it turned out that both of them had prader willi syndrome, which is a chromosomal ge genetic disorder of the 15th chromosome presents itself with behavioral issues, developmental issues, physical issues, but the most uh, pronounced uh, characteristic is um, their hypothalamus always tells them they're hungry. They're yeah. not satiated. Um, so they're food seeking. Um, can you imagine having a child that says, I'm always hungry, I'm always hungry. Right. Um, physically they aren't, but developmentally okay. they are um, hungry. Oh my goodness. Um, Katrina, what do you do at the uh, uh, I Latham am Centers? Jerry's associate, so I'm yeah. the development associate there. I do some grant writing also, event planning with Jerry, whatever Jerry needs help with. I, um, I'm his right-hand lady. I, I really help with all the developmental needs at Latham Centers and getting word out about what we do at Latham Centers. It's really important to us that we teach people in the Cape Cod community as well as communities in the Boston area about what we do because it's special yeah. and we're a special place. And Paula, I, sh I should also say to go on that since 1970, Latham's gone on to um, you know specialize in Prada Willie Syndrome. Right. We're, we're, we're nationally known for it. But it's not all we do. It, half of the students, we have a residential campus in Brewster, mm -hmm. serves about 45 kids at any given time. But we've also grown into having an adult program. So that's very important because, you know, f with the state funding ends for students to, right. to be at yeah. a school at 21 or 22. And, but what we provide is a continuum of care into an adult program. So people are often surprised to learn that we have about 12 residences for adult 12 residents. 12 residences now, wow. From, from Wareham to uh, all the way to Brewster. Wow. Um, and, and then some of the adults may be in an independent living situation or a right. shared living situation where there's in effect a host family who is trained uh, to supervise right. their care, but also to provide them with a, a warm home. I yeah. hadn't realized how, how large the, the campuses have gotten now. Obviously, your, your footprint is, is pretty much the entire Cape now. It is, uh, except for you know the outer Cape. Sure. But I'll, I'll, I'd be happy to open that office. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, there's so many things going on at Latham Centers, obviously, with, with students and adults there. Um, activities, obviously, need to be um, uh, addressed, uh, you know, what to do there with these kids and, and with the adults. Um, there's a new program uh, that you just started and being a dog lover myself, the Hersey Hounds, uh, <laughs> would probably really like this program, is Latham Lifelong Pet Care. And that just, it fascinated me when I first saw the program. Can one of you uh, or both of you tell us a little bit about the program? Sure, I'll start. Okay. Latham Lifelong Pet Care was created when we looked at the students and adult needs at Latham Centers and you realize how underemployed individuals with special needs are, yet they are gifted and 
Uh, they have great senses of humor and they have skills. One of the skills that they have and are near and dear to their hearts is uh, animal care. Um, along with animal care is animal therapy, which everyone knows right. has great scientific uh, proven benefits mm -hmm. towards individuals. And so we said, what can we do to try to meet that need? We held a focus group in the community and they said, yes, we need pet care needs on Cape Cod. We have those needs. Yep. And so we have developed Latham Lifelong Pet Care, which has a dog walking component oh. as well as a pet sitting component and a lifelong pet care component, which is different than traditional pet sitting, um, but lifelong pet care is the concept where if you're older or you are in medical need and you're not sure how much longer you are going to really be around to be able to care for your pet, Latham Lifelong Pet Care allows you to give your pet to a Latham residential home. They oh. become a Latham dog or a Latham cat oh. and it's a totally cage-free living environment. Oh my so goodness. You don't have to ask family members or friends right. and set things up in your... Or you your, might not have family. Yeah, you know. or you right. might not have that, but you still want the companionship and the security right. that having a pet gives you as you're older, yeah. um, or if you're in a specific medical condition. Right. And Latham Lifelong Pet Care, that part of the lifelong component, allows you to set yourself up for that great... Um, set your pet up really for right. the great life after you've unfortunately passed. Oh my goodness. So it's a way for us to engage with the community. Yeah. It's a way to for our residents to engage and provide a, a valuable service to the community. And of course dog walking is great exercise for, mm -hmm. for everyone. You know, we mm -hmm. we strive to keep our residents really active. You know, right. sometimes they'll come to us and you know it's not unheard of that they, they have lost half their body weight because they've come from a very dangerous situation, right. which is mm -hmm. why they come to us. Yeah. Um, and you know, they can lose lots of weight, they're on a good diet, but they're also extremely active. I mean, yeah. we, we, our vehicles don't say Latham Centers because we don't want to stigmatize our residents, right. but we're everywhere in the community. I mean, mm -hmm. they're out doing field trips, they're out doing volunteer work, they do uh, newsletters for the VNA, for local churches. Um, They're just doing some stuff for Audubon recently. Yep, yep. We were um, out out there last week on a, a nature walk. Um, but you know, we're always trying new ways to connect the individuals' community. But the the thing about the pet care is that it provides them a sense of, of solace, but also a sense of connection. And as right. we know, animals don't judge. Animals yeah, just right. love. Exactly, you know. as There's, we know very yeah. well as the two sitting under our table today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Dog, he's, uh, he's definitely on guard today. <laughs> uh, that is amazing, and, and as you talk about um, animal therapy as, as a whole, um, there's been so many studies done that this really is scientific, uh, that, you know, uh, PST is, is definitely uh, mm -hmm. being helped by dog mm -hmm. therapy, and there's another program that you have that's donkey therapy? Yeah. Which I thought was amazing, because horse therapy, but horses can scare a lot of people with their size, I guess. Mm. Well, it's interesting, you know, it was about six years ago, um, one of um, our consultants, who you, we deal with some very, uh, you know, well-known PWS consultants, right. and uh, she suggested donkey therapy, and I think at the time our president, Ann McManus, said, what? Because it's also referred as, as asnotherapy. Okay. But it, it, it had been proven popular and successful in Germany. But so we took a, a, a whack at it, and uh, one of our longtime volunteers who has since passed, Bill McLennan, many people know yeah. Bill McLennan, he helped, he was a, a career fundraiser, but in his retirement on the Cape, he just helped numerous uh, charities. He would yeah. just say, you want some help? And, and help raise money. So he, he had this bond with Latham, and he decided he was gonna get a barn built for a property we had in East Sandwich that was yeah. actually agriculturally zoned. So within a day, there was a barn raising because <laughs> that afternoon were two donkeys coming from Vermont. Oh my goodness. <laughs> to reside on the property. <laughs> and that was the advent of our uh, donkey therapy program. Wow. Uh, and what it does is it, it allows the, 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 the adults, and now we've branched into our, our 
school for students mm -hmm. uh, a formal training to learn how to care for them, how to um, groom them, how to um, you know manage their behaviors. Miniature donkeys can be quite obstinate, and they're also <laughs> highly food-seeking. Ah. So there's sort of this mirroring quality and relationship that happens. My goodness. But they also like affection. Um, so it's been very, very successful, so much so that um, this past year, we had a board member who had two miniature donkeys, just by sheer coincidence, yeah. in Maine, where she had previously lived. And the couple that had, they left them with, were, were moving on, so we had to find these two donkeys a home, Esther and Esau. Our board member is actually yeah. a minister, too. Yeah. Th that's the biblical names. Yeah. But um, we had a house in East Dennis, a few miles from our school campus, that's a transitional house yeah. for older kids who can learn more kind of ADL skills yeah. um, in a more you know transitional environment because it, it changes once they graduate from right. school. They're off campus. It's a yeah. little more isolating. So these two donkeys now are part of the program for our kids in East Dennis, uh, oh. which is you know on Setucket Road, right on the Brewster-Dennis border. That is amazing. I hadn't really heard of the donkey therapy before, and it just it, there's so many innovative things that folks can do with um, uh, disability and challenges that you know there really isn't any reason that. Everybody can take part in something, mm -hmm. so it's it's not that you you just sit somewhere all day. You're, there's so many activities that Latham Center does. Like it talks about lots of outings. Um, this new lifelong pet care uh, is just amazing. Um, it's and you know the kids. I, I watch them communicate with the mm -hmm. animals, and it's it's more intimate than. You know, they they might not see me every day, but it's right. they're connecting with, they're having a conversation with them, and again, there's no, it's very gentle, and you can see the therapy happening before your eyes. We've also had um, one of our adult residents highly successful in a horseback riding, and she won a few medals at the International Special Olympics Games in uh, Greece a few years wow. back. So yeah, the power of animal therapy is is just huge, and. You know, there's so many pet lovers on the Cape, so we just right. see it as a win-win. And also, it's a, it's an investment opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. Some, if, if folks get to know us more, we are offering charitable, charitable gift annuities where they can make a donation and it will help to fund the program and then the, the donors receive tax credits for it as well. That yeah. is just great. It really is. There, I have a favorite story about it. Um, one of the beta sites, one of our board members, they had a nine-year-old dog, have a nine-year-old dog, Golden, yeah. and uh, Caleb balked a little bit, didn't enjoy going on walks, kind of would hesitate towards the end of the driveway. And they said, well, we'd love to try out the dog walking program and, and see what it offers Caleb, because right. he can be a bit of a challenge. And we said, well, that's great, because it's a learning opportunity for the adult yeah. resident who will be walking Caleb. And we set up a schedule Wednesdays and Fridays, and at this point, um, they just took a little time off for the month of August. Hopefully they'll start up again once fall rolls around and the winter gets mm -hmm. a little bad again. But now Caleb on those Wednesdays and Fridays when he, he heard the, the van pull in and Warren with his one-on-one -on -one aid, of course, with this program, right. all dog walking, all dog walkers are accompanied by an aid. So it's a 100% safe environment insured and now Caleb hears that car pull in and gets excited and loves going on walks. It's and like a new dog. Yeah, there's a new vivacity <laughs> to him that they haven't seen in years and it's because of that bond that Jerry was just describing that right. it's almost indescribable. And the enthusiasm, yep. mm -hmm. you know. When you, right. we just saw uh, Shasta and Mr. Dog playing before we started and this is like they come alive when their energy begets energy. You it know? really does. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is such a great program. I, I'm uh, amazed at some of the um, uh, innovative uh, things that come out of folks like yourself and, and other uh, organizations that deal with disabled and or challenged um, individuals. You have to be. You have to be because right. they're coming here because oftentimes uh, a previous program hasn't been su so successful. Right. Um, so we, we're always pushing ourselves to do, what can we do better, what can we do differently, mm -hmm. because it's a challenging population, and right. 
um, if we are not successful with them, no one will be. You know, right. even technology. We've we've right. started to introduce iPads in the classroom. It's reaching kids in a different way. Yes. Um, you know, and it's always a struggle um, to fund these things. But when we can right. fund them, they're worth it. You know, the the pet program, where for the dog walking, we're not, we have to charge a fee, but the, right. we're not making any money <laughs> on it because you know we have to pay the, the staff person to bring the resident right. with them that travel time, and then, but it get it gets the resident um, a modest paycheck for their services. So imagine the pride too, where they get a paycheck. Exactly, and know. financial management that goes along with that. There's so many sure. things that we take for granted as individuals that right. don't have any special needs. I mean, sure, right. we might have some special needs, but right. medically, um, and the fact that they now can have that paycheck and say, okay, I want to do a direct deposit, and I need to uh, save up in order to get item A because right. it will be helpful to me, and yep. so it. It's not just about the mm -hmm. dog walking and helping the community. It's also about the learning experience that you get and um, the animal therapy experience that we've also discussed that goes along That's with right. it. And you talked a little bit about funding. I know you guys have uh, a lot of events that, that uh, obviously do fund some of your programs. People can go to your website and find more uh, information on that at LathamCenters.org, is it? Yep. Yeah. We, uh, we have a team of 19 runners in the Falmouth Road Race. 19, that's yeah. a big team. Yeah. yeah, it's our third year. Every year we've added Are you running, more. Jerry? I am not. I should be. <laughs> I should be, but I will be there in spirit. There you go. <laughs> I, I want to be around <laughs> after the race. I know, I've said the same thing. I will definitely wave to you from the sidelines. <laughs> However, Katrina. Yes. You are going to run? Uh, that's, that's the plan, yes. I okay. did fundraising for it along with the runner running that goes along with the Falmouth mm -hmm. Road Race. Each of the runners raises $1,000 or more right. depending on what they can do as a commitment. And so that is one of the reasons it's such a great fundraiser for us. Right. And people learn about Latham because each runner has their own network of friends. And so, yep. for example, I have people in California uh, family members right. and for the first time they know more about Latham Center. Sure they knew that I right. worked here but now since they've donated they feel like they're part of the family and yep. it's a it's a great thing that we can do. But the money we raise the money we raise goes back into the program like we're right. letting some of the um, house managers um, use it for gym memberships if, a, if an adult resident wants to swim or wants to join a gym um, maybe some technology uses mm -hmm. some transportation for Special Olympics we're very very active both the children's and adult program in Special Olympics on the okay. Cape and off Cape so um, th that's that's a fun event and it brings in some parents uh, we have one student running uh, a lot wow. of staff running um, and a that's few friends. That's for the staff too. I mean, it a, is. A camaraderie and yep. getting, you know, do you do after work runs and things like that? Or we, I mean, the thing is everyone's so busy, busy and the right. staff at Latham Centers is 365 24 seven, which is a really special aspect to Latham Centers. It right. makes us unique in what we do, but it also means that getting all 19 runners together yeah. at one place in one time yeah. that would is be the near impossible. <laughs> that will be the Falmouth Road Race, exactly. It's, <laughs> Unfortunately, or fortunately, they're, you know, their staff, I'll see people in the community, they, they say, you must know so-and-so, but sometimes I don't because that's a very important aspect because they're working overnight shifts. Right. People are blown away by the fact that we have 260 full and part-time employees at Latham. And the reason for that is because every resident, residence and every school dorm it's, it's staff 24-7, 365. Um, some of the kids have family to go back to for vacations, um, for weekends, but some don't. Some, right. some of our individuals are DCF or DDS kids, so okay. we are their family, their family in right. essence. Um, but we're always staffed, you know, safety's first. Right. Um, and there are some situations where uh, an adult or a kid in crisis might um, require one-to-one -one staffing. So it, it's that intensive. That's, you know, w I just want to explain that, you know, what we do, it's very intensive. Um, usually kids that come to us, it, they have three to five diagnoses. It's not like they have one Boy. thing going on. There's a lot going on. Right. So it requires a lot of hands on deck. Uh, it requires right. a lot of um, innovative 
therapies and approaches. Um, but um, I think we've made great strides uh, with our staff over the past five years, a lot of internal yeah. promotions. And what's also interesting is, you know, we have a few kids from Cape Cod Tech working in our IT service oh, great. department, but then we have a staff member in his late 70s. So our, our work pool <laughs> spans uh, 70 years or 60 years, yeah. you know. That's mm -hmm. great, though. I mean, the immersion into community as well. Uh, Cape Cod has this wonderful, wonderful community that comes together that obviously, you know, employs 200 and something people. And you've become family while you work there. And, you know, the, the individuals that you serve um, are, are well served by our community and by, obviously, the Latham Centers. And, you know, I just want to say to that, too, is like, some people say, well, are they, are they all from Cape Cod? Well, no, but the point is they usually end up staying here, and just right. like me and others, they've moved here, and they are Cape Codders. They, That's are, right. they are our neighbors. They are, yeah. you know, they're here with us. That's fantastic. Um, I'm going to probably uh, uh, check into this th dog walking program, <laughs> having uh, three rambunctious uh, Australian shepherds. Um, <laughs> we could definitely use that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to have you guys back and talk a little bit more about uh, your golf event, which is coming up in October. But I really wanted to thank you, Jerry and Katrina, for coming in today. Yeah. And Are we already out of time? Out of time, I know. <laughs> wow, well, that seems went by fast. It <laughs> does <laughs> seem uh, really quick. Um, again, we'll bring you back for your golf event, obviously, and we wish you all the best with your Thank program. You. I'm Paula Hersey, and this was Profiles with Latham Centers.